Hey, 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 guys. <sighs> I'm going to give everyone a second to start coming in. Get this puff. This is what it looks like to be on spring break with kids. <laughs> um, hair is a mess. It is beyond wash day. Um, we were out of town, took the kids to kind of like an indoor water park. So... My hair is not clean. My hair is not clean. Just going to be honest. I have got to do a serious wash day. But it is wash day for me and the twins. Um, so this is what it looks like to be a mom of three, including two twins. Um, when you need a wash day and you're home on spring break and you're working remotely. We got buns high. We got glasses on. Contacts is out. Eyebrows is not on fleek. Lips is looking a little dry. Skin is dry. Anyway. We're going to push through. We are going to push through because it has been weeks, guys. It has been weeks since I have jumped on here. I am far and beyond um, 10 minutes with tabs, and I know it, and I know it, and I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to say I'm sorry. A part of me is like, we don't apologize for taking a break and needing a break, but I am sorry because I did say at the top of the year, that what was important for me in 2019 was that consistency. And I've been doing really, really well with my 10 minutes with tabs. And if you guys don't know, I initially said they were going to be every Tuesday 10 minutes with tabs where we come in and we talk curls, love, and life. Because part of my mission for 2019 is also opening up to you guys more about just things pertaining to curls. But also opening up about my tagline, love and life. There's so much about me and my life outside of natural hair and curly hair and being a brand ambassador and an influencer that you guys don't know. And I just want to open up more to that because there's so many things that we all relate to on a different level. So I've done a great job opening up more. Um, and again, it was supposed to be on Tuesdays. It ended up being kind of any day of the week, but I've also made it a point to upload all of them to my YouTube page. So after this, Head over to YouTube, catch up on the other, I think there's 10. I think that I've done 10, 10, 10 minutes with tabs so far this year. So get caught up on those other 10. Um, but we're just going to jump straight into today. So like I said, I've been MIA. I apologize, but I don't apologize for just needing to take a break and needing to step back. And I don't even know if I planned on coming back this week because once I've kind of got my momentum back, I... Got it back during an off week where I'm really disconnected and off the grid for my kids and for my husband. Um, because like I said, it is spring break. It is our vacation week. Um, we typically take this week off with our kids. So I kind of, I just wanted to be present. But I am back, logged on to work. I'm working remotely. Shout out to those remote jobs. Um, I'm working remotely. Um, I'm not in the office this week. So I was like, well, if I'm kind of back on the grid with work, at least I can be back on the grid a little bit with Instagram. But I think more than anything that prompted me to come on here is, I'm just going to go into it, y'all. I'm just going to be honest, is um, what happened with Nipsey Hussle on Sunday. There's, there's no other <laughs> way to say it. If you guys follow my personal pages, you know I have... Um, posted quite a bit the last couple of days. And it might seem a little left field for some of you. If I post about any artist, it's going to be Bryson Tiller and Beyonce and Jay-Z. Um, but of course, you guys know there's more artists out there that I love and support and I follow than just them three. But Bryson Tiller and Janae Aiko. Anyway, I'm not going to get in my list. I'm a music head. For those of you who know me, you know I'm a music head. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that I've been down with Nipsey... For 10 plus years. I'm not. I haven't been. Nipsey has um, been recently introduced to me in the last couple of years. Of course, just like everyone else, I really started following him more so when he came out with Victory Lap. I knew a little bit about him before Victory Lap um, because my first trip to L.A. back in 2013, just getting kind of some exposure to the L.A. culture, um, and just falling in love with Cali in L.A. period. Um, I think more so is when I got kind of exposed to him. But again, really followed him more and really started understanding his mission um, around the same time as everybody else. So 
I'm not going to sit here and get on this live. Like, oh my God, I am like the biggest Nipsey Hussle fan ever. That is not the case. But I think um, it's safe to say that a lot of us are affected this week. This goes far beyond his music. Yes, I'm a, a hip hop fan. That's easy. Um, I'm absolutely in love with any lyricist. I love lyricists that tell a story. I feel like Nipsey tells a story, but this goes beyond that. And again, like I said, I felt like if I was going to come out of 10 minute Taz retirement this week needed to be this week. And it's also prompted that I wanted to jump in here too, because you guys know, I also, um, am a co-host on two different podcasts. One of them being the Let's Be Clear podcast. Um, we record every Wednesday night. We usually have the link up every Thursday. And I'm just going to be honest. Here's a little preview. That Curls Love and Life that you guys typically get from me on my portion of the podcast, my segment, I'm shutting it down. <laughs> Tonight is all about this topic. Um, so you can consider this 10 minutes with tabs just a preview. Um, but... Scroll in social media and I'm realizing I'm not the only one affected by this. And I've really had to kind of tap into my own emotions and figure out why I'm affected. I am, and if you, again, if you follow my personal page, you know I've kind of gone in a little bit with our crime solvers that's been pissing me off this week. Um, so I'm just going to state my personal opinion. This is not about Dr. Sebi. This is not about a documentary. This is not about none of that bullshit. This is straight street politics, street situation, street shit. I don't know how else to say it. Um, and this is kind of where my feelings come in and I get a little PTSD. Um, I was talking to some good, good girlfriends yesterday. And I think personally why I'm so affected by this story is because I see a lot of my own life in it, unfortunately. Um, gang violence, gun violence, not, I'm not even gonna focus on gang violence. Um, because that's Nipsey's side. That's, that's Nipsey's story to tell. That's, that's his people's story to tell. I'm gonna focus on gun violence. <sighs> gun violence feels like it's such it not feels, it is. It's such a epidemic for us in our country. It's it's a problem. But then sometimes you feel so small. You feel like this is such a small community. The reason I feel like it's such a small community is although you hear about it so much, when you have been directly impacted and sometimes you reach out to your immediate circle you realize that sometimes you find yourself being the only person that has a personal story, a personal experience with gun violence. So as much as this is an epidemic for our society and our country, I'm realizing that this week, I'm in a very, a very small group. Um, for those of you who do not know, um, my brother in 2002 was murdered. Um... It is a story that I feel like I have not really told a lot. Um, I'm not from where I am now. I live in Atlanta, the south side of Atlanta. Um, so not a lot of people here know that story about me. I feel like that almost defines me um, when I'm back home, when I'm any anywhere north of Virginia. Um so when I'm here and I've been down here in Atlanta for the last 14 years, I'm, I'm kind of removed from the situation, quote unquote. When people see me, they don't see that. Every day of my life, I deal with that reality. Every moment, every second, there is not a, a moment that goes by that I don't think about it. And I don't think about my brother. Um, so if I think if I was back home and got the news of Nipsey... I might have felt a little different, but I think being here in the Georgia and kind of being separated from it a little bit and the people that I connect to here, not everyone has these personal experiences. I think that's why I feel like I'm in such a small group of people. And I think that's why I've been struggling the way that I have. Um, and again, as I'm scrolling social media, I'm realizing a lot of people are affected differently and 
I'll quote Charlemagne the God if any of you ever watch The Breakfast Club. I, I swear by it. I watch it every single day. I love Charlemagne the God. I love DJ Envy. I love Angela Yee. I'll quote Charlemagne the God who said, this hits different. This hits different. And for me, it hits because, again, I feel like I relate to the story so much. You have a young black man who's everything to a lot of people. Um, like my brother was... And I won't even speak for everybody else, but speak for myself. Like, my brother was to me. And you have some lowlife who decides in a moment to change the trajectory of my entire life. Um, in a moment. One moment, one split second, one reaction changed my entire life life. So when I think back to Nipsey, all the love, the support, the outpouring of so many different communities. I mean, you even have the LAPD kind of be taken aback, like not Nipsey. Um, and for those of you who know, you know, who Nipsey is and know kind of his background in the story, that it's kind of shocking to think that he would get that much support from the LAPD. But that's just how much of his overall story overshadows just the small portion of his, you know, his background, his overall story as a man and as a human being. So it's just, it hit home for me. I'm not even going to like ramble on. It hit home for me. And what I realized is I'm struggling a little bit. I am struggling a little bit. So there's no secret, I'm not ashamed of it or anything, but after my brother's murder, I did not seek counseling. I didn't. Um, Again, this is not something that is unfamiliar to my family. So I think we kind of just picked up with me and my family's reaction and response to me was just to move me forward like they had in the past. My brother lost a brother, a sibling to gun violence. Um, we've had other family members that we lost to gun violence. So I think when it happened, we kind of just grieved and moved on the way we normally do it wasn't until about a year and a half to two years later that my mom's like okay you're headed to college you're going to be alone um we're a little concerned we want to make sure you get counseling so I did um get counseling my freshman year of college and I was diagnosed with PTSD so totally new to me <laughs> totally new to me um, when I sat down to my counselor and kind of just told my story, I just, I felt like I was just talking the same way that I'm talking to you guys, but I was, of course, explaining in detail, this is why I'm here, my mom thinks I should be here, this is kind of what happened. I was so disconnected from telling the story that when I finished and I kind of not opened my eyes, because my eyes was open the whole time I was telling the story, but when I kind of snapped back into the reality and kind of got my balance again I guess you'll say like my surroundings came back to me I looked at the counselor and she was in tears now mind you I'm not in tears as I'm telling this story because I'm just I guess at this point I'm numb to it um so once I realized she was crying I was like all right something's not right about this like why is she crying and I'm not um so long story short I was diagnosed with PTSD and part of having PTSD is you have triggers you have triggers. It's something that I have learned along the way. It's something that I think she probably told me then. I just don't remember it. Um, but over the years, as I have had other friends dealing with mental health things, um, it's something that I've been reminding of. PTSD, you have triggers. So I'm like, I am struggling since Sunday. I am struggling and I'm not understanding why. Gun violence is not something that I don't get. It's not something I'm not exposed to. It ain't something that ain't happened since my brother died. Like, I hear about gun violence all the time. What the hell? Like, schools, unfortunately, get shot up. So much has happened. So why am I having triggers? And I think the issue for me personally is because how close to home Nipsey hit. And I appreciate social media for this I appreciate it and I don't for this reason because I'm able to scroll social media and see that it's not just me, that I'm not the only person struggling. Everyone's struggle might be a little different. Mine is different in the sense of it just hits home. It hits home. Um, someone lost a son. Someone lost a brother. Someone lost a father. Someone lost a husband, a friend, a, a grandson, all of the things that Nipsey was. A community 
lost an amazing man. Our world lost an amazing man. Hip hop lost amazing man. Just, just lost all around, right? Um, so I'm thinking that's what the issue is with me. It just it hits home again in a split second. A a coward, a fucking snake can make a decision that changes the tra trajectory of so many lives. Um, and I say social media is good in that sense because it made me feel like I wasn't alone. Because again, remember I said I feel like being in, or in Atlanta, there's not a lot of people directly connected to me that can relate. Um, whereas up north, I feel I have friends, I have cousins, of course, I have direct people related who have been affected by gun violence. Whereas down here, it's kind of like, well, I know somebody that knows somebody or I saw something on the news. But to be able to say my brother, my sister, my cousin, my dad, my mother, you know, anything that close, I don't really have that around me. So social media is good in that sense because it made me feel like I wasn't alone. But it's bad in the sense that so many triggers. I made the dumb decision to follow a click. Uh, follow a link um, where I saw Lauren running into the hospital. And for those of you who don't know who Lauren is, Lauren is um, the spouse, the fiance, the wife, the, the girlfriend of Nipsey. It was never confirmed if they got married, and I'm not here to care about that. It doesn't matter. They were in love. That's all I care about. Um, they had a child together, and seeing her... And seeing this clip, which I should have never clicked, I should have never clicked, um, seeing her run up to the emergency room doors, hearing her scream, um, not only was it a trigger and it made me flash back to the movie ATL, for any of you who have saw the movie ATL, you know Lauren London played a character um, that was dating T.I. and when she thought... When she got the news that T.I.'s brother was shot, she ran up to the hospital and she was like rushing down the hallway. Um, so that, it made me think of that and was like, damn, that's kind of messed up. But it also was a trigger to me to the night my brother was murdered and, and how you feel. How you feel when you get that call. You don't, you don't imagine the end. I don't know if this is for everybody, but I've never been in a position to see anybody else in that moment. I know my moment. And now I know Lauren London's moment. Hearing her, hearing the way she screamed, hearing her ask, is he okay? It was very reminiscent of me where you just, you don't see that. You don't see he's not. You you just, you need to know that he is. Um, and just all in all, without rambling, it was a complete trigger. It was a complete trigger. I know that pain. I know, I know that scream. So I'm just like, fuck, damn, social media. Like, that is the good and the bad. That is the good and the bad of having that access. And I don't even feel right that I clicked on it because that is such a personal moment that you, the, the whole world doesn't need to see it. Um, the the death videos, the the moment he got shot videos, him hitting the ground, all of that stuff, that is something that we really don't need to replay over and over again. And this leads me to something else that I'm going to bring up on the podcast tonight is, is social media causing PTSD in people and we don't even realize it. it. I know it's desensitizing us. Like we have access to watch people get murdered, people get shot. There's so many stories you hear where people are on live when they get shot. It's, I feel like it's possibly, I know it's desensitizing us to it. Um, whereas... You have people who've never seen a dead body now can simply scroll and see a dead body. You have people who never saw somebody get the brakes beat off of them and how traumatizing that can be. And now you can click on a link and see that. Um, if you've never seen anybody get beat that bad, just just be thankful. Um, so now I'm wondering, because I know what it is to have PTSD. I know what it is to have triggers. I'm wondering if... This is creating the same thing in people who didn't previously have it. Because if I know that I can click on this link and see Lauren London run up to that hospital and hear that scream that is very reminiscent to the scream that I had and the reaction that I had and that panic and that worry and that I just need to get to him. 
um, and it triggers my PTSD, I'm wondering if it invokes that same feeling in other people who don't have it and who are now potentially getting exposed to having PTSD. I don't know how it works. I'm not a therapist, but I'm really interested um, to reach out to some therapists that I know. Um, there's a girl that I grew up with um, named Tonette, and I believe their Instagram handle is a space for us, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm really enjoying what I'm seeing them do on Instagram as far as mental health and mental health awareness. So I think I'm going to reach out to them and see whether or not, um, just see what their opinions is on this. Just kind of to, to, to broaden this conversation. But anywho, that's definitely something I want to tap in tonight on our Let's Be Clear podcast. Um, I just want to know how other people feel, whether or not they feel like having access to social media to this extent is causing PTSD in people. Because I have certainly, certainly been triggered. And I'm not, again, I'm not new to this. I knew I had two options. I could either continue being so immersed in this that it makes it worse and it makes it harder for me to come out of it. Because again, it starts with Nipsey and then I just start thinking about my own life and my own brother and just everything. All those thoughts, memories, emotions, it all floods back. Um, I could either sit in that or I could be honest and I could reach out and I could say that I'm struggling and I could say that this is a problem and I could work through it. So I'm choosing that and I'm choosing my more than 10 minutes with tabs now, um, to kind of let that be known because again, I'm not ashamed of it. It's definitely not nothing to be ashamed of. So if there's anyone watching who, you know, you're, you're feeling some type of way and you don't understand why, if you know, you have been directly affected by gun violence and you never sought um, any type of counseling or anything for it, I would strongly suggest you do it. It's never too late. It's never too late. Again, my brother was murdered in 2002. Here we are, you know, 17 years later, this July 25th, and I can't say I'm any further past it. I have different things that I do to make myself better and to feel better and kind of pull myself out of it, but it still hurts. So, and that's with the receiving counseling. So again, I strongly suggest if you have been affected by gun violence, if you don't feel like you're okay, whether it's a month, a day, or 30 years later, I strongly suggest that you reach out to someone. Um, and again, this was my brother. So that's something else I wanted to think of um, to mention. I saw Nipsey's sister. And again, it, it fucked me up when I saw Lauren's response and just the outpouring. I know it. I know it. And as soon as I saw your name pop up, I thought of you because I know your brother as well. Um, as soon as I saw Lauren's response, fucked me up, right? Because I'm a wife. I have a spouse. I couldn't imagine. I couldn't even, and I don't even know if I can go into talking about that because I'll, I'll, I'll break down, right? But to see Sam, which is his sister, to see Nipsey's sister response really hit home for me and it triggered again because it's a very different feeling. You know what I mean? Like, I know... My mom losing my brother, I'll never understand her pain. I know my uncle losing his nephew, I'll never understand his pain. I know his girlfriend at the time losing him and witnessing the murder, I'll never understand her pain. We share a commonality, but I'll never understand their pain. I know now losing a sibling, losing a brother, losing an older brother is a very specific pain that not everybody understands um we are we are in the same boat um it's not it's a very specific pain that not everybody understands so to see his sister and I think her post was something like I lost my protector I lost my love I lost my brother like trigger again trigger so it makes me think social media is being another trigger for me and really setting off my PTSD for it but it is, like I said, it's a very specific pain. It's a very specific hurt. It's, I sympathize, I empathize with anyone who has lost a brother to gun violence. Like I said, it's, 
And this, I'm not here to compare how we lose people because I've lost people to illnesses. I've lost people, you know, where it was months. I've lost people in a moment. I've lost people in a moment to a different sickness. Losing a, losing my brother to gun violence, knowing that another man, uh, no, he's not a man, a coward, knowing a coward made a decision to change the trajectory of my life, my kids' lives, my grandmother's lives. I'll never get over it. I'll never get over it. Um, and it's interesting because I was listening to The Breakfast Club earlier. They're giving daily updates. I appreciate it. And Charlemagne the God made the comment of, I know two rights don't make a wrong. But basically, he was wishing death on Eric Holder, the shooter. And I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I've been there. I've been there. I've 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 wanted that same pain for my brother shooter and then I thought about it. He has a sister. If he has a sister. If he has a sister. I don't wish this pain on any other sister. I don't wish it on any other sister. Um and then again seeing the pictures of Nipsey and his sister and just the reality that he had a son that she could pour into, that she could love on. I didn't get that with my brother. I didn't get that his his name died that day, if that makes sense to you guys. Like, his name died that day. His legacy didn't die. His spirit didn't die. Ironically enough, um, my son and his godson were born July 15th, years later, which were, they were born on the same day, 10 days before my brother's murder. Um, so I'm like, your legacy lives on, your spirit lives on, your name lives on. My cousin also had a son after my brother's murder um, and gave his son my brother's last name as his middle name. So his last name essentially lived on, um, his first name lived on, my son is Aiden Joseph, his godson is Gavin Joseph. So it's there, but it's not the same. It's not the same coward. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right, coward. Like, I can't. Man is not the word for him. It's not the word. Um, oh, thank you, Sandra. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so it's so many emotions. And I was like, I'm not going to get on here and cry. Because like I said, I could cry about this every single day. I just wanted to get on. I wanted to use my 10 minute with tabs. Again, to step outside of curls. To, to get into that love and, and life that I always speak of. And to let you guys know. If you are watching what's happening with Nipsey. Thank you. If you're watching what's happening with Nipsey, if you're staying if you're staying um caught up in the story, if it's triggering you, um don't feel ashamed. Um don't feel ashamed. Don't feel like, "Oh, why am I upset? You know, I didn't personally know him. I didn't personally know Nipsey either." But this is not okay, and I feel like social media is exposing us to PTSD. It's triggering those who already have it, and it's exposing those of us, you know, those who don't have it, it's exposing you um, to it. It's not crazy that you feel any type of way. Like Charlemagne the God said, this hits different. This hits different. Um, and we can talk about it. You know what I mean? We can talk about it. We don't have to be crime solvers. Um, we don't have to figure out who did it. We just have to... Um, tap into our feelings and accept the fact that this is not okay. It's not okay that a a young black man was taken from us but at the hands of another man. A community lost someone, a wife lost someone, kids lost someone, and a sister lost someone. It's not okay. It's not okay. And it's okay to say that it's not okay. And it's okay to come together and to acknowledge it. And again, if you lost anyone to gun violence if you haven't seen counseling i strongly recommend it because ptsd can get worse um if it goes undiagnosed um like any depression like any type of mental health it can get worse if it goes undiagnosed there are things that you can do to help there are groups there are people that you can talk to again i have various things that i do um to kind of help myself and i've been having to tap into that all damn week um, and I just, the only thing I hadn't tapped into is speaking about it out loud. So 
that's what I'm doing now with you guys. And that's what I will do tonight on the Let's Be Clear podcast. I know it's going to be an amazing episode. Um, we are all three, me, Del Wayne, Antoinette, we're very passionate people, if you've heard any of our prior podcasts. So I know this is going to be a very passionate topic. So I definitely invite you guys to listen tomorrow when we drop the link. Um, again, we'll be recording tonight. Listen tomorrow when we drop the link. Um, leave your comments, reach out, do whatever you have to do. But I think um, these triggers are a bitch. <laughs> I'm just, I'll just be honest. I'll just say it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, 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 Sandra. That um, that was another reason I think I decided to come out of my hiatus from um, 10 Minutes with Tabs because I felt like the universe was really speaking to me because I kept sitting on it like, mm, mm, I don't know if I'm going to talk about it. And then I got on your Parent to Parent Live last night and we started talking about PTSD and we were talking about gun violence. Now, we were talking about kids with PTSD and gun violence, but I was like, it's, this is nothing but the universe <laughs> speaking to me. So again, um, I think it's important. I think it's important that we talk about it because the people that you don't think are struggling with things are where you feel like you're alone. Like, unless you know me from Pittsburgh or New York, or like I said, anywhere North of Georgia, a lot of people down here don't know about this don't know about this portion of my life I mean other than if you follow my personal page you see me have my moments like I'm sure everyone has seen me the last three days like damn Tabitha is only posting about Nipsey yeah because I'm triggered um so unless you know that about me you would not PTSD doesn't have a face you don't look any certain type of way with PTSD I mean yeah my hair is a mess today but this isn't how I normally look. You don't normally look down and depressed with PTSD. Typically, you put on a smile, you put on a good face, and you try to move forward with your days because that's what you're taught. You're taught to put one foot in front of the other. But I could be in a crowd laughing and smiling, and a song could come on, and you have no idea that I'm dying inside because it's a trigger for me. It's a trigger. So it shouldn't have surprised me that something like this would have triggered me, something with Nipsey Again, being so influential influential in his community um, and just being a stand-up guy trying to do the right thing and being taken away. It's no, no, it shouldn't be a surprise to me that it triggered me. And you never talk to anyone but your husband. Oh, we can definitely talk about it. We can definitely talk about it. That's something that um, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I get it. You lost a brother. I lost a brother. I, I I get it. I didn't I didn't have anybody. I didn't really have anybody, which is another reason my mom had me go to counseling because she again, I said at the beginning, she her she lost her brother. But my family, the way it works, we're not new to gun violence. We're not new to losing anybody. So my mom is a New Yorker. Her mentality is shit happens. You know what I mean? And not to say she wasn't us upset, like she's still 17 years later, it's not okay, but her mentality as far as moving forward is he's gone. We mourn him, but we move forward. You know what I mean? Um, she went to counseling because it was her son, but she didn't go to counseling after her after her brother. She just, well, she, she did some things, but <laughs> that's my mother's story to tell. Um, but that's just, that's the mentality. We just, we lost them. We bury them and we move forward. You know what I mean? Like, the family handles his affairs, however that may be. The same thing that I said with Nipsey. Like, we don't need to be crime solvers. We know his family's going to handle his affairs. We know, at least I know, unfortunately, kind of what that life is about. So I knew shit was going to get handled appropriately. Like, we didn't need to figure it out. We didn't need to point Eric Holder out. You don't think his family and friends knew it was damn Eric Holder from the get-go? They know. They know. So, same thing on my side. Oh, he reminds you of Matt, girl. Quick, quick story. The summer my brother was murdered, I got shipped off to Virginia Beach. I ain't even going to go into details of why I had to get shipped off, but I got shipped off to Virginia Beach. And I was in a, I seen this dude twice. That's the messed up part about it. I seen him twice. I, the first time I saw him, I was in the mall and a guy was walking towards me. Couldn't tell me it wasn't my brother. When I tell you, I freaked out. I, I lost it. 
lost it. You know how it is when it's fresh, right? Lost it. To the point where I was shaking uncontrollably and like my cousins who didn't understand were trying to get me to work through it and trying to get me to actually go up to the guy. Like they, one of the girls, one of my cousins um, went up to him and was like, "My, listen, long story short, my cousin lost her brother. You look exactly like that nigga. Like we need you to go. And I was just like, that's not the answer. Like having him come closer to me, I promise y'all is not the answer. Um, so people don't even understand how that feels even more of a trigger. You know what I mean? Anytime I see a guy in a New York hat with the brim low, that's a trigger. Anytime I hear any Biggie song, any Faith Evans song, any Mary J. Blige song, like that's a trigger. And I have to be the one to say, keep it going. You can't force it on me because that just, you don't know how I'm going to react. I Either I might cry and sing, you know, the Old Boy song with, you know, and be in good spirit. Or I might hear the beginning beat to Old Boy by Cameron and, and shut down. So, you can't force that on people, and I don't think that's something everybody understands. PTSD is very different for everybody. The music. The music kills the music kills me. The music kills me every time. Um, it's hard. But yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Like I said, I know you lost Matt. I lost Joe. It's very specific when it's your brother. It's very different. Again, I don't have a lot of people I can talk to about it. Um I have people who have lost a brother, but I don't have people who lost a brother to gun violence. So we definitely relate there. Um, and I'm here. We can talk about it. We can cry about it. We can talk about our triggers. I'm here. Talking through it definitely helps. I'm not still going to counseling about it. So other than the techniques that I have from counseling all those years ago, um, that's all I got. So I would love, I love somebody who understands to be able to talk that through. So I appreciate that, love. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. <sighs> All right, y'all. This is definitely longer <laughs> than my normal 10 minutes with tabs. And I'm glad I didn't, like, break down like ugly crying like I thought I could have. But, again, I just wanted to come on. Again, this is this is about more than just curls. Um, okay. Okay, I look forward to that. This is about more than just curls. Um, you guys know my tagline is curls love in life, so... This is about opening up more about love and life when it comes to me and, you know, you guys being able to relate to me on a different level. So, again, stay tuned. Typically, I, we drop the link on Thursdays for the podcast tonight. So, again, this is tonight's podcast is going to be more than me just being in my feelings about my brother. It's going to go deeper. It's going to go into talking about Nipsey, talking about, you know, the crab mentality, lifting our, our black men up, the fact that so many of us, this just hit fucking different it just hit different period it's not okay um talking about gun violence talking about ptsd and talking about how i feel like social media is kind of increasing the amount of ptsd we have because i was fine sunday i was on my little vacation i was enjoying myself enjoying my family and my kids and that shit hit and i've been struggling to recover just being honest so all right guys that's all i got i love you guys let me oh look at that I have 10 more minutes of work. <laughs> Let me get back to work and I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right. Bye.